Okay, this is notes 10.2 on double replacement reactions, and it's a really easy set of notes, okay? Um, there's not a whole lot to say, but there's a lot in terms of, um, in terms of what you have to do to, to convert from uh, English into chemistry, for lack of a better way to put it. Okay, this type of reaction is also called a double replacement re or double displacement reaction. Usually one product is an insoluble salt or a precipitate. The reaction is a precipitation reaction when this happens. When an acid is combined with a base, the reaction is called a neutralization reaction. So in other words, they neutralize each other and the pH uh, becomes 7. A precipitate, now remember, it's whenever you mix two, uh, two liquids together in a solid forms. Okay, the general form of a uh, double replacement reaction, as we discussed, looks something like this. AX plus BY yields BX plus AY. BX plus AY. Okay, so in other words, what happens is these two separate. The, I mean, I'm not separate. These two uh, switch places. Okay, so A switches with B. These are both positives, usually. These are both cations, so positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, the positive switch, or you can think about it usually as, usually, not always, as a metal, non-metal, and metal, and non-metal. Okay, not always, but a lot of times. Okay, so the steps to solving these things are identify the ions and the reactants. Recombine the cations and anions to form new compounds and the products. That's this part. Identify the states of the compounds. Use the solubility table. At least one of the products should be a precipitate. Well, usually, not always. And then you balance the equation. So let's look at what they're talking about here. Solutions of calcium iodide and silver fluoride are combined. Okay. Calcium iodide. Well, calcium is a group two element, so we know it's got a plus two charge. Calcium's got a plus two charge. So calcium and iodide is a minus one charge. So CaI2. We need two of these iodides to cancel out the plus two charge of the calcium. CaI2 plus silver fluoride. Silver, if you look on your ions list, or on the back of your green periodic table, silver has a plus one charge. Okay, and iodide, well you should know that, it's a halogen, it's got a minus one charge. So silver, I'm sorry, silver fluoride rather. Silver fluoride also has a minus one charge. It's also a halogen. Silver fluoride. What happens when these two combine? Calcium switches with silver. So silver, again with a plus one charge, Combines with iodide, minus one, plus calcium and fluoride, CaF2. Now we can go back through and read what state they're in. It says solutions of calcium iodide, that's aqueous. Whenever you see solutions of, you know it's dissolved. They're combined, so now what we do is we look at our solubility table and we figure out which one of these formed a precipitate silver iodide or calcium fluoride let's look and see let's start with silver iodide silver where did silver go here it is silver iodide did in fact form a precipitate okay and what about calcium fluoride we can look just to be certain calcium fluoride oh look at that calcium fluoride also did Okay, calcium fluoride also did. So in that case, you've got two precipitates that occurred. Okay, now the next step is to go ahead and balance the equation. Over here, I've got one calcium and one calcium. I've got two iodides and one iodide, so I can put a two there. That now gives me two silvers. I can put a two there. And that also balances out the fluorides. I get two fluorides. So that is done. That's how you do these. You're bringing everything together that you've learned, okay? Go ahead and copy that, and we'll move on to the next. Solutions of aluminum chlorate and potassium hydroxide are mixed. Aluminum chlorate, so aluminum, look in here, where did it go, aluminum. Aluminum forms a plus three. Chlorate forms a 
minus 1. So I'm going to need three of these chlorates to cancel out that plus 3 in aluminum. So here we go. Aluminum chlorate, ClO3, and I need three of them, plus potassium hydroxide, KOH, yields potassium and aluminum switch places, so that's going to be potassium chlorate, KClO3, plus aluminum hydroxide, ALOH, and I need three of those, aluminum hydroxide. Okay, now I can go back to my solubility table. Aluminum hydroxide is a solid. And what about calcium, I'm sorry, potassium chlorate? Potassium, oh, look at that. Everything that forms with potassium is aqueous. So I can put an AQ there. And I've got, in fact, solutions of both to begin with. So I can put AQs there. And again, my last step is to balance. So I've got one aluminum here, one there. I've got one hydroxide here and three there. So what I'm going to do is put a three in front. That gives me three potassiums. And I'm going to put, I've got one over here. So I put a three in front. Now I've got three potassiums. I've also got three chlorates and three chlorates. So I am balanced. Okay. Lastly, by the way, uh, I'm going to show you today in warm-ups uh, that, and hopefully you will have uh, picked this up, that you can treat these polyatomic ions like chlorate and hydroxide. You treat them as one unit when you do your chart. That way uh, it's a lot easier and a lot faster for you to balance these equations. Okay, next up, solid cupric acetate is dropped in water. Solid cupric acetate. So if we go back to our ions list, cupric is copper 2, okay, and acetate has a minus 1, okay, C2H3O2. So we need two acetates to cancel out the plus 2 charge of copper 2. So Cu, and then two acetates, C2H3O2, and we've got two of those. And they said that's a solid. We'll get to the state in a second here. Is dropped in water. In this case, I'm going to do, they've, they're telling us this is a double replacement reaction. So I'm going to write water like this, HOH. And you're going to see why I do that in a second here. When I switch out, if I write it water as HOH, then I can switch out this H and the copper more easily. Okay, you can write it as H2O, but it's more helpful to think about it as HOH. Okay, so if I switch that out, what I end up with is HC2H3O2, acetic acid, plus copper 2 hydroxide. And copper 2 hydroxide, again, is written this way, CuOH2. I'm going to go and look at my states. That's solid. It's dropped in liquid water. So we write, because water is a pure substance, it's not aqueous. There's an aqueous suggests that it's dissolved in something. And because water is not dissolved in anything, water is water. It's pure. So we can say L. That's an L for water. Okay, water typically we use L to show that it's pure. Next, acetic acid is aqueous. Copper hydroxide, let's look and see if copper hydroxide forms a precipitate. Copper 2 hydroxide, as a matter of fact, it does. Okay, so we write S there, indicating that it formed a precipitate. And now we go through and balance. One copper, one copper. Two hydroxides, one hydroxide. So we're going to put a 2 there. So now we have two hydroxides and we've got two H's. We've got two acetates here, one there. If we put a two in front, we now have two H's, two acetates, and we are in fact balanced. And that is how you do these. They're quite a lot of fun because again, we're bringing everything we learned together. You can go ahead and do your worksheet, uh, worksheet 10.2.